Okay, I thought I'd strike while the fire was hot. I'm gonna go ahead and do the, the uh, screencast for Management 3603. This will be for Wednesday. This is the pre-recorded screencasts I mentioned in the message I sent to everybody as well as my schedule and as I spoke about in class. So uh, that screencast, we're gonna spend a little bit more time today looking at the second case, but let's go over here for just a minute into the modules for today, <clears throat> the modules that are due this week, and just by review, um, we're in module six, and you're gonna have the, you have due on Friday, uh, Anderson, those two, uh, chapter seven and eight from the Anderson text, and then Ice Cold, you'll want to upload it here uh, for, uh, for the credit, and I covered it, to a great extent this morning, and we talked about some about it involving the issue of capital budgeting. And just quickly, we'll go back over here to page 328. And of course, the ice cold case, here it is, they have these different projects and the capital available. And we went through a discussion of that and then looked, and this is, these are applications involving binary choices, uh, one, go, zero, no go. And we talked about capital budgeting and how that all occurs and how it has a, uh, how it has an, um, how, it sh how we can use Solver to look at the possible outcomes and we, moved even from just simply one alternative in the capital budgeting problem when we created this linear, this is the uh, linear programming model, i.e. the mathematical model that's fed into the, well actually is, is shown up here, total capital available. Okay. And, that's, and that we talk about fixed costs versus variable cost, and here's the solution that we got. And I'll go back down to my desktop for a minute because I had it out here today. Okay. And all you need to do was, was, to, was to upload it and then over in ice, ice cold explained, and I'll see if I can get that to open up for me. It's already running, so that's okay. We're good to go. And I'm gonna get the ice cold explained, and I had it on here somewhere on here. Here it is. Arnold Buddy's happy. He won a spot in the playoffs. And I'd give you, given you some instructions. And I'm going to take this cell and move it up and move it over so we have a little bit better line of sight. Okay. There we go. Now, as I'd ask you so we, in cell F20, you know, enter a one and then see the new results in cell D16. And we, we went through that and I talked about even we could build a scenario, a table of the outcomes, depending upon which choice we made in terms of, of we choose none of these or all of them or any combination of these four. And so you can see we did have some choices. Um, in that, in in this capital budgeting situation. So while it's binary, we do or we don't, um, and we assume these projects are mutually exclusive, which means, you know, we can uh, choose to do it or not. We can use Solver to play out these scenarios and see what things look like. And and you remember when we did all of them, we got the the best value. 
and we'll say change that from new product research to zero uh, from zero to one. Notice we get a 177, but notice we got all kinds of freakiness going on here with the left hand side and the right hand side. Okay, which means we're going to have to allocate more resources. We just don't have enough resources for the model to work. So we'll put that back. Now we're going to talk about RMC. And go back over here to the, go back into the, to the, um, in, into, into Canvas. And as we walked through the case, and that's pages 330 to 332, we talk about the, the, fi the problem of fixed costs, okay, and how they can, and how they can be, how they can impact us in the sense of do we, the extent to which we can or cannot utilize or engage in the use of set or, or, or app apply setup costs, excuse me, my brain that must be dead. And this company, as I mentioned before in class today, they build, um, they have a combination of materials to create a, a solvent uh, and, and, and those, they have three of those three uh, components, fuel additive, a solvent base, and then cleaning carpet. Uh, fluid. And then they show us the profit contributions for each of those. And that's where we get down here. Okay. The maximization. There's the 40F and the, the and they give us the $40 per ton is the profit contribution. per ton for the fuel additive. Then we see the $30 uh, for the solvent base, that's per ton, that's the profit contribution. And then for uh, the carpet cleaning fluid, we get $50 per ton for that, okay? And so we wanna maximize our profit, so we're going to build the model 40F, plus 30S, plus 50C, and we have some constraints. There's the subject to the uh, material one. We cannot, we have to have, we, we can produce less than or equal to 20 tons of material. And this, the, the figures, the constraint data come from up here in the narrative of the case. So what's required? And this is material one, obviously would be, you could call this also material F, and this and this is material S, and this is material C. And they, can, they must be greater than or equal to zero. You can't pretend we're not using any material. That's ignorant, stupid, dumb, dumb, dumb. But you could see how those constraints are built. Now, We'll stop here for just a minute because notice what's happening. We're building a maximization. Equation. We're putting in constraints. And so we're talking about how are we going to allocate costs for material usage, but more importantly, how are we allocating the profit per ton. Now obviously if you look here the the carpet cleaning fluid is is fifty dollars per ton in terms of the fifty dollars uh, profit contribution. Okay but you have customers who use but you in order to produce the the whole which is greater than the sum of these parts up here you're gonna to need to go ahead and, and use the maximization. Now, <clears throat> as the authors note here at the bottom, 
All right. And they come up with an optimal solution of 27.5 tons of fuel additive, zero of solvent base, and 15 tons of carpet cleaning volume. And they have a value of 1850. But what they note here at the last last pair, last couple of sentences, the part this uh, formulation doesn't include a fixed cost for production setup of the products. Now, it may seem odd that that a setup cost would be considered a fixed cost, okay? And this is one of the points on this in this text. I somewhat disagree with the authors. I think they're splitting hairs. To me, a setup cost implies you're doing, you're, you're moving some equipment or you buy some new equipment, you're getting materials, you're allocating labor, okay, to set up for an additional run. Now, technically, setup costs are those for new runs or current runs of production. So in this case, technically they're correct, but it could be, able, you kind of have to think your way through it. But they, but what we see here is we're not seeing the fixed costs to set all this stuff up. You don't just start producing stuff. You have to have a place to make it, to produce it. You have to have the machines. You have to get things lined up in order to do it. You have to have the supply, but you have these fixed costs that must be paid. Now the supply, you, the amount you use will differ per order, i.e. volume of business but the cost of the machine, it will not. That's a sunk cost, that's a fixed cost, you must pay for it. The, 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 the land uh, and the production facility itself are gonna be sunk costs. But definitely the fixed cost on this is gonna be the machinery that you have to have in order to run the batch. And we're doing batch processing here. Maybe a lot, they don't tell us whether they're doing batch processing, which is taking order by order, or doing a long continuous run. Okay. Oh, we'll pop it over here. So they give us the uh, first solution <clears throat> without setup costs involved. Okay. And here we get the, op the optimal value. Now notice that we have reduced costs because we don't use any of material S okay how realistic that is I don't know it's a mathematical answer but uh, my brain's telling me that gee guys Folks, if uh, you make the stuff and a fuel additive, a solvent based and carpet cleaning fluid, so is the products that they make. Okay. That's okay. So I'm mistaken on that. These are not components of a singular product. These are different, three different products. My apologies. That makes all the difference in the world. All right. That being said, that now this makes a lot more sense. Now, we're given the maximum amount they can produce, the setup cost for each of these. And now the authors come really to one of the big takeaways in this chapter, and that is this use of this binary model, okay? And here it is. We can choose to make the fuel additive or not, okay? We can choose to make the solvent base or not, and we can choose to make the carpet cleaning fluid or not, okay? The, we have the setup costs involved, and that's how we involve them in, in the decision making. So we're gonna absorb the setup costs to make, for example, the fuel additive. Then we get this total, and these are the setup costs. That's where we got the 200. Here's where we get the 50. 
is where we get the 400. Okay. And so we've got these setup costs. And then we know we want to maximize our profits. And the 40, 30, and 50, these figures come from the problem, the earlier problem we did, where we just we didn't take setup costs into account. And now we want to take into account setup costs. Okay. And that's going to that's going to incorporate that's going to involve excuse me a new statement and we're going to say that the f the capacity that we can't make uh any more than 50 units Okay, and that's the fuel additive is the 50. Now, that's how we begin to build in those choices. And so we have the variable is F, which is the profit per ton Per item and and really we see these three less the three setup costs and then we have we built in some constraints in terms of the materials production so all we've done for the setup cost we just added into the equation for the objective function And it shows us the proposed plant, the annual fixed costs, the annual capacity, and we're good to go. I strayed into Martin Beck, my apologies. This is the distribution design problem, I'm sorry. We'll go ahead, take a look at figure six, seven, six. We can find there. That's figure seven seven. Let's pop back here and find seven six. Here it is. And there's our optimal objective value using this max this objective function with the profit. Contribute, profit contribution per ton per product less the setup costs. I spent some time in class today talking about setup costs and, and why they're important. And that is, we don't just, as I said before, we just don't decide to produce something. We have to go through setup costs. And I talk, I spoke some about this steel industry. The the, the way that the United States has regained a new foothold is that they, we have built what we call more flexible manufacturing facilities. These are plants that can make or handle all types of steel on a batch order basis. Meaning someone comes in and says, I don't need 300,000 tons of this. I need 25 tons of some uh, metal of a certain strength, okay? So, and maybe even a certain strength and a certain cut, steel rods, for example. So that means that we set the production line up to handle making those. And those setup costs do impact, um, do impact our, the performance. And we talked about this when we talked about the Leisure Airlines and I spoke about Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines attacked the setup costs, that is, the time it takes for a plane that's just arrived to be prepped and ready to go because they make their money when they're in the air. So the setup costs 
and trying to reduce those being more flexible manufacturing methods, more versatile machines, people who are more who are cross trained to work with it with all kinds of of materials and orders, and that's where the, the those setup costs come into play. Okay. All right, now, <clears throat> let's look at the files because I have two of them that I want you to upload today. And one is the RMC without setup costs. And I'm gonna download this to my machine, okay? And here's RMC. And this is without the setup costs. All right. I'll go for the solver. Now, I gave you some explanation here, so let's take a look at Here's the net profit per ton. The tons produced, this is the additives. Yeah, I share with you that 326 and 327 incorporate that setup and the binary approach. And then I note that the setup costs reduce the net profit and how RMC3 illustrates that. Okay, so here are the fuel additives, the tons produced, the tons available, and the profit per ton. Okay. For the fuel additive, solvent base, and the cleaning, And what we've got available, the profit per ton. So we don't make any solvent, we make cleaning fluid and fuel additive. And this is with, without the setup costs. Now we're gonna look at it with setup costs. Now, I'll just project this out. Did you see the net profit here? And notice that we've added in the setup costs per ton and then the capacity. And we see how that changes the constraints. And we're set up to go, the left hand, the right hand side, our net profit, the tons produced, do we, do, we, do we absorb the setup cost or not? They say not to do the cleaning fluid so you don't absorb the setup cost and we end up with this net profit. And you can download the file and take a look at it. In fact, you'll want to upload both of those files there for your credit. And again, this is just to show us, or for us, for you to see <clears throat> how it, different it looks when we incorporate in setup costs. Now, now, 
the first one when we didn't have setup costs is what we would call a classic long run production. I, I'm just, I make this stuff all day long, seven days a week, et cetera. The other where we have setup costs we have to take into account is more likely when we engage in what we call batch orders. In other words, people, our customers contact us and say, I need X amount of cleaning fluid uh, by next Thursday, blah, blah, blah. So you're taking orders and filling the orders. You're not just working on one big gigantic order all the time. You're not just producing stuff and then selling it. You're taking orders and responding to orders that come from your customers. And so when we put in the setup costs, we see that how that dynamic gets itself involved. And we spoke some also about our the alternatives that we have. Okay. And you can see how that objective value gets changed and how we have to do some working. Now again, these two cases have been to show us some major takeaways. Number one, capital budgeting, which is any expense I'm going to absorb that will go over more than a year, I've got a capital budget. And if I do, I have to make a decision, am I going to undertake that project or not? Okay. And so I have a binary choice, that's the one and the zero. Then I have, if I'm making stuff, I don't care if you're making hamburgers and hot dogs, or you're making steel, you're making cars, you could be making movies. You have to consider, you can look at the, you can look at the objective function with a profit contribution approach but you also have to look at the fixed costs that are there because they have to be paid. And this comes and we in turn and brings us back to our old friend of the total cost equation where total cost equals fixed costs plus variable costs, variable costs equal the costs uh, of a one additional unit or another is the additional costs I absorb by doing, by selling or producing more of something. Okay. And then the contribution margin, which is the revenue per unit, less the variable cost per unit. And that tells us what we've got to pay to fix costs. And for folks, especially manufacturing, well, in many industries, fixed costs are, are um, um, tremendously important, which is why yeah, a movie a movie studio is going to try to use the same set over and over and over. Uh, we spoke about a manufacturing facility. The same why, the same reason why if if you are a if if you are a franchiser and you you know you sell people hamburgers or hot dogs or fish or whatever, you're going to absorb a fixed cost at every single location or those locations will become part of a component fixed cost for your big picture. And you have to be mindful of those. And so optimizer says, okay, we'll take that into account, the profit contribution per product, the setup cost per product, and let's see, given our constraints in terms of what we can handle, what we get. And that's why this, the, the RMC with the setup and without the setup are important. They're important for you to see and to understand the dynamic that occurs there when we take into account those costs. Okay, now 
<clears throat> again, I want to point you to some resources that I've got here for you. And um, some of the basics of capital budgeting, just a refresher for you. Order and setup costs, the dynamics of them. Okay. See, order, order costs are typically fixed. It doesn't cost me any more to order a million units of something than it does 10,000. I just complete the form and turn it and turn, you know, and, and give it to my vendor. If I share an e-commerce back office op uh, environment with them, I go on the website where we share it's a back office. It's it's a shared website, and I I say, okay, I need forty thousand of these, and ten thousand of these, and twenty thousand of these. Boom, and I need them by July first. Can you fill this order? If you say no, but I could have filled filled by X date, I have to decide do I like it or not. If they say yes, we can fill it. Then I say, okay, let's get started and go. Then finally. The Northwest Corner Method, which is a, a, which helps us solve transportation and shipment problems, i.e. network problems. And I have these resources here for you in terms of jobs and logistics, and then careers and logistics and supply chain management and data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics on job prospects and logistics. And all I can say is this, I'm gonna harp on it again. There are two things I tell you, especially if you are, especially if you are a management or marketing major, and there's nothing out on the prospects for you and your concern. Let me suggest that you look into logistics companies and supply and firms that are involved in the supply chain. Their businesses are booming because of world trade. And I know the tariffs are an issue and all that business, but it, this won't last forever. Number two, uh, I would say this, and I've said it before, one, company that gets involved in this kind of problems of logistics and distribution and setup costs, all this would be Enterprise Rental, who hires more college graduates than anybody else in the world. And if you go to work for them, yes, it's retail hours, and yes, it's working with the public, and yes, it can pretty it can probably be pretty brutal the first year, but I guarantee you, having that on your resume says something about you as an individual and makes you an attractive hire if you decide to go somewhere else when someone says, well, you work for them and they're you know, one of the best companies in the world. So you really are management material. You really are an employee we'd want to have. Okay, let's look ahead for just a minute since I won't uh, be doing a live stream. Let's look ahead for what's coming up on, on October 7th. Okay, and we're going to be looking at the uh, Martin Beck case that's over there in Chapter 7. And uh, we'll tackle that one case, and then you have a couple of exams that week. Then let's see what's going on. It's the, okay, and then in two weeks, we'll have fall free days. And so I think the fall free days are Thursday and Friday or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, no, cl no class 10, 18, so it starts on the 18th. Yeah. Well, I'll just confirm that right now. Yeah, there's no class on uh, 1014, 1016. No class 1018, fall free days. And I do have assignments due, the assignments are due the 16th, which is that Wednesday. And we'll look at, we'll start to move into some new territory nonlinear analyses.
Okay. All righty, folks. That'll pretty much do it as far as the sessions for this week. We had the session today. We've looked at here at, at RMC with and without setup costs. We've saw how we can use the optimizer to help us when we're dealing with mixes of components or mixes of products and how we deal with the issue of setup costs that are really that, that get embedded into our operations. Okay. Well, I'm going to call it a day then and thank you so much and I will see everybody next week.